The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Some people call our kind of entertainment escape fiction. Well, that word has never been more appropriately used than to describe the story you're about to hear. It's about a man with a most unusual profession, a man who makes his livelihood by making escapes. But now, the great Ferlini is going to cap his exciting career with the greatest escape of all, even if it turns out to be the last escape. And if you think Houdini took great chances, wait until you hear what the great Ferlini has in mind. That's right. I'm going inside that box in a bathing suit, and they're going to dump me right into the middle of the lake. Joe, well, that's crazy. It, it's too dangerous. What you mean is I'm too old for it, huh? But I'll show you, baby. I'm not too old for the trick. Or for you. Our mystery drama, The Last Escape, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Henry Slesser and stars Joan Lovejoy and Robert Dryden. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. We're in the glamorous Tropicana Supper Club. The music is playing. The palm trees are swaying. But, unfortunately, the music is being produced by a sleazy three-piece band. The palm trees are papier-mâché. And the Tropicana isn't in the tropics. It's New Jersey. If there is any glamour here, it's the glamour of illusion. And that's what the customers have come to see. Ladies and gentlemen, here's what you've all been waiting for. Direct from command performances in London, Paris, and Rome, the man who defies ropes, chains, locks, handcuffs, steel boxes, and prison bars... The one, the only true successor to the immortal Houdini, here he is, Fellini the Great! Thank you, thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to be here with you this evening. You know, some people have asked me why I do these things. Why I continue to risk injury and even death in order to demonstrate my ability to escape from any bonds devised by mortal man. Well, let me tell you the reason. It's because of a deep, abiding love of liberty to demonstrate the indefatigable spirit of man in his quest for personal freedom, a freedom which each one of us enjoys in this wonderful country of ours. And now, I'd like to introduce you to a lovely young lady who is going to assist me in my demonstration this evening. Here she is, Miss Wanda Wilson. As you can see, Miss Wilson is holding something in her hand. It's a straitjacket designed to restrain the most violent madman. Madness, as you know, often increases the strength of its victim enormously. But this jacket has been created so skillfully that experts will swear that there is no way out of one. The great Houdini, however, once proved that it can be done. And tonight, before your eyes, I am going to attempt to duplicate his astonishing escape. What? Yes, Felini. Please ask two men from the audience to assist us. Yes, Fellini. 
Why don't you go out? Uh, how about, uh, what about you two gentlemen? Will you help out? Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> no, uh, uh, if you two gentlemen will just put the jacket on me. Yeah, yeah that's right. I fold my arms around my torso, and then you secure every strap. Yeah, yeah that's it. Just as tight as you can now. Yeah, that's right. Every single one of them. A little tighter. Tighter. Make sure there's absolutely no way I could get out of it. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. And now, ladies and gentlemen... To spare you the sight of my agonies, Wanda will place a screen in front of me. Here it is, Fellini. Wanda, Wanda, can, can, you, can you come here a minute? No, Tommy, not now. The act. I've got to talk to you. Can, can you meet me later? I don't know. Please. I'll try. That's all I can say. <laughs> See, now one strap is torn or broken. The straitjacket is in perfect condition, but I am free. I'll tell you one thing about this escape. You don't have to be crazy to try it, but it helps. <laughs> Tommy, I can't talk too long. Why don't you come out without a coat? You'll freeze to death. Well, I couldn't very well have put a coat on. Joe would have asked where I was going. Mm. Where is he now? In the dressing room. I, I gotta get back there. Mm, he really keeps tabs on you, doesn't he? Mm, you know how he is. What did you want? You know what I wanted. To see you. To see you alone for a change. Oh, Tommy. They really liked your husband tonight, didn't they? Well, oh, it's that kind of a crowd. I bet they liked you, too. Thanks. I, I didn't mean it that way. I mean, you know what I think of you, Tommy. Your singing, I mean. Is that all you mean? My singing? Tommy, don't, don't. Not here, not in this filthy alley. Where, then? There's no place I can ever see you. No place at all. It can't be helped. Joe has to know where I am every minute. He goes crazy if he doesn't see me around all the time. Not that he's jealous. He thinks too much of himself to be jealous of me. He just has to know I'm around, admiring him, waiting on him, hand and foot. Oh, he treats you like a slave. Tommy, I got to go. He's probably foaming at the mouth right this minute. Wanda, please, listen. One, one kiss. One. <laughs> All right. Oh, Lord, why does someone like you have to come along now? I told you, I, I, I went to get some cigarettes from the machine. You shouldn't smoke. I never smoked in my life. You think I could have lungs like mine if I smoked? I got the lungs of a 20-year-old, you know that? Yeah, I, I know. Boy, I really felt good out there tonight. I could have done a steel box bust out tonight. That's how good I felt. Hey, you see that little guy who put me in a straitjacket? Little guy thought he was going to fix me. See how tight he worked the straps? I was there, Joe. The little guys, they're the worst. It's a pleasure to fool them. Joe, what do you say? Are you, are you just going to keep staring into that mirror all night? I like what I see. Don't you like what I see? I never knew anyone who liked to look at himself the way you do. Forty-nine years old. Nobody would ever take me for forty-nine. What do you say? You're a Greek god, Joe. And speaking of Greeks, we're invited out to dinner tonight. Roscoe is buying. Ah, uh, yeah, Roscoe, he spoils my appetite. You hear him talk, the escape business is dead. He should have seen that crowd tonight, that's all I say. He's no different. Well, he booked you into this job, didn't he? He ought to know if it's dead or not. Only thing wrong with the escape business, it don't get enough publicity. That's the only thing. All right, Joe. Everything comes back. Old movies come back, old songs, even old clothes. Only you got to make a splash. And I mean a splash. Joe, you, you're not going to start that again, are you? Start what? With Roscoe. You're not going to start talking about that water business again, are you? I'm sick of that subject. Ah, you're getting old, Wanda. That's your trouble. The water trick is the best idea I had in years. Don't talk to me about age. You're no chicken, Joe, and don't forget it. 
An escape like that could be too much for you to handle. So I'm no chicken, huh? Listen, sugar. I count ten new wrinkles on your face since last week. Take a good look in a mirror. Oh, stop it, Joe. Go on, ah, take a look. You're hurting me. Go on, I said, look at yourself. Stop it. You call it old, huh? <laughs> I'm younger than you, baby. On a count, I can't all, right. all right, all right, just let me go. That's right, turn on the tears. <laughs> Not everybody thinks I'm old, Joe. <laughs> Not everybody. <laughs> You should have seen me tonight, Phil. I was the best. That crowd really ate it up. Didn't they wonder? Yeah, it was a good crowd for that crummy joint. No, not crummy joints. Not if they pay off every Friday. Listen, after tonight, I wouldn't be surprised they booked me for another month. I'd be surprised. You close next week. What? I told you it was a three-week engagement, Joe. Yeah, but you said... I mean, maybe it would go longer. Well, that's as far as it goes. Okay. Okay, we'll find someplace else, right? Someplace better than that crummy Tropicana. Sure, sure. I'm telling you, Phil, the escape business is coming back. And when it does, I'm going to be right on top. You're practically the only one left. All I need is one good break, one good publicity stunt. Uh-oh, here it comes. Starting with that water trick again? Yeah, that's right. But you're going to stop bothering me about that. I don't stop bothering you until we do it. Look, Joe, you know as well as me that times are different. 20, 30 years ago, a good press agent could ballyhoo an escape artist right onto the front pages. Only Houdini's been dead a long time. Sure, sure, Houdini's dead. But I'm alive. Me, Joe Fellini. It's one thing about you, Joe. You never had any trouble with false modesty. Listen, what could Houdini do that I can't? I work with the ropes, the chains, irons. I can get out of boxes, bags, hampers, chests. I can do all the handcuff routines. Nobody does a faster straitjacket than me. Besides, you know that Houdini used a lot of phony trick stuff. And I suppose you don't. Sure, sometimes. I got my skeleton keys, my phony bolts, and all that other junk. But you know me, Phil. I do my best tricks with muscle and brains, right? Sure, sure. You're the greatest, Joe. Yeah, I keep, I, I keep in shape. Ask Wanda here. One hour a day with the barbells. Yeah, I still got a terrific chest expansion. I can do this water trick, Bill. It'll be great. You know something, Wanda? Maybe the only way to stop your husband from talking about this is to let him do it. Oh, Phil, no. All right, Joe, how do you plan to work the act? I really do it up good, Phil. First, I'll let him handcuff me. I mean, genuine cuffs. All checked out by the chief of police or somebody like that. And yeah, what makes you think I can line up the chief of police? Then after I'm handcuffed, a rope around my body, around 50 feet. Then they put me in a burlap sack and tie it up good. Then they put the whole works into a steamer trunk and dump me right in the middle of the lake. How's that sound? Like sudden death. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Two minutes after that trunk goes into the water, out I come. Then all I got to do is swim. And how do you plan to do it? Oh, I ain't giving away no trade secrets, Phil. All I can say is I got a new gimmick that'll make it more sensational than even the water trick Houdini did. Phil, you can't let him go through with this. It's a trick for a young man. It's... I can do it, I said. Just tell me when we start, Phil. I'll tell you when, Joe. As soon as you can prove to me that you can swim... I never thought you'd be able to get away from that guy, Wanda. Oh, Joe, finally went someplace you couldn't take me. Where's that? To a men's gym. He went to swim in their pool. What for? Oh, he's... He's going to do a trick. He calls it the water trick. He gets handcuffed and tied and all that, and then they dump him into the lake in a big steamer trunk. Ooh. That sounds pretty dangerous. Well, the only danger would be Joe getting too winded to swim to the surface. I know he can get out of the cuffs and the ropes and all that, yeah, it but... It seems to me that if the slightest thing went wrong... Uh... Oh, he'll take all the precautions, or, or we will, rather. We? Well, I help him out with the trick part of it. Oh. Then there is a trick. <laughs> part of it's a trick, naturally. But, uh... 
even tricks go wrong sometimes, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, they do. Uh, did anything like that ever happen to your husband? Well, mm. yeah, once. He, he couldn't open the lock on his handcuffs. See, he had a key hidden in the cuff of his trousers, but it slipped out of his hand and fell between the cracks of the floorboard. He wasn't hurt or anything. It was just a wicker basket escape on stage. I see. But if anything like that happened now, I mean, uh, at the bottom of a lake... But that would be terrible. It would be awful. Yeah. It would be really tragic, wouldn't it? I, I don't want to think about any such thing. I, I just don't want to think about it. No, 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 of course not, Wanda. At least uh, we won't think about it tonight. Well, unless I heard wrong, it sounds to me that I've just heard a conversation about murder. No, the word wasn't spoken. The plans weren't made. But it wasn't difficult to hear between the lines. Will Mrs. Joe Ferlini really spoil the grandiose plans of Ferlini the Great? We'll find out when we return shortly with Act Two. Engagement is over for Ferlini the Great at the Tropicana Supper Club. But now Joe Ferlini and his wife have a new address, a small and rather shabby hotel which bears the name of Lakeview, undoubtedly because it's located on the edge of Lake Paradise. This afternoon, Wanda Ferlini is alone and bored, disinterested in her copy of Variety, tired of reading about the success of others. But then... One second. Oh, Tommy. Hello, Wanda. Surprised? Of course I am. What are you doing here? Isn't it obvious? I came to see you. No, no, no. Scratch that. For a publication, I came to audition for a singing job at the Lake Paradise Inn. Is that the truth? You know what the truth is. Look, uh, can I come in? Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. I've uh, already tried to get a job at the end. Nothing doing there. But Ferlini doesn't have to know that, does he? You shouldn't have come here, Tommy. It, it won't look right. Where is he? Joe? He, he's at the lake swimming. Uh, That's all he's been doing for days now, practicing his swimming. Then he's really going to go through with it, the uh, water trick. Oh, he's coming through with it, all right. His agent, uh, you know, Phil Roscoe. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, he's actually getting excited about it. Can you imagine? He, he's been doing a terrific job of lining up publicity. Publicity won't help Ferlini, Wanda. You know it won't. He's old hat. That escape stuff died when Houdini did. Well, you never know, Tommy. I mean, he's actually gotten the local chief of police to cooperate. He's, he's going to make sure that the handcuffs are absolutely genuine. But your husband can still get out of them, right? Well, yeah, he... He always does. How? Tommy, I told you I didn't want to talk about that anymore. I, I don't like what you're... Well, you know what I mean. You don't like what I'm implying, right? No, I can't blame it on you. I'm the one who did all the implying. I'm the one who said that if one little thing goes wrong, Joe's a dead man, he'll drown. One little thing. We've got to stop this. Good Lord, we can't talk about murder like it, 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 it's something casual. Well, be murder? Isn't that what we decided? Just because something goes wrong with the act, that isn't murder. We're not going to be arrested for me. Please, Tommy, I'm trying to forget what we said. Did you forget saying that you love me? No. No, I didn't forget that. Is it still true? Oh, you know it is. <laughs> Wanda. Tommy, don't. What if he walked in? Then you know who'll get murdered. You and me, both of us. Yeah. How's he been treating you? <laughs> worse than ever. Every day it's worse. All he thinks about is the act. Night and day. Escape, escape, escape. Oh, sometimes he thinks I'll go crazy, Tommy. I mean it. Easy, easy. He wakes up in the middle of the night, throws off the covers, and takes a bow. Uh, Wanda... What's this? What? These handcuffs. 
Are these the ones he uses in his act? Well, those are the new cuffs. The, uh, the ones he plans to use for the water trick? Yeah, that's right. Hmm. They look real, all right. They are real. Oh, they're not trick handcuffs? No. This police chief who's going to inspect them, he's an expert in this kind of thing. Oh, he, he'd spot a trick cuff in two seconds. But Ferlini still gets out of them. Well, he has to. Or he can't get out of the ropes or the sack and then the steamer trunk. Okay, okay, okay. Then tell me how he does it. Well, you must know, Wanda. Yeah, I, I know. Well, then show me. Okay. Hey, uh, hmm. uh, w w what are you doing? Putting the cuffs on you. <laughs> I'm no escape artist. I'll show you how to be one, Tommy. There. Now, see if you can get your hands loose. Uh, <laughs> well, I can't. It's impossible. That's right. It's impossible. Without this. Oh, a key. Yeah, just this tiny key. That's all it takes. Just turn the key and it's open. Are you telling me that he has the key with him when he goes into that lake? Well, of course, there's no other way. I mean, the key is hidden someplace, like in the trunk or the bag, someplace like that. Oh, he, he can't take the chance with this trick. Every single piece of equipment will be thoroughly checked out by the police. Well, then how will he manage the key? Well, he hasn't told me that yet. Usually he has it sewn into the cuff of his trousers. Uh-huh. And is that what he's going to do now? Well, I just don't know, Tommy. Well, all I know is this. What we talked about still makes sense to me. Very good sense. All you have to do is make sure that Ferlini the Great has the wrong key. <laughs> look at that story, Phil. Just look at it. Four big columns all about me. And don't get carried away, huh? It's a big story, but a very little paper. Circulation 10,000, maybe. No, that don't matter. It's a beginning, just a beginning. When I pull that stunt on Saturday morning, I'll be on all the wire services. You wait and see. Now, I just hope you don't end up in the obituary column. Ah, stop worrying about me. Well, I'd worry a lot less if you'd tell us how you're going to do this trick, Joe. That's what I keep asking him. I've been working for this guy for 18 years, and I know every stunt he pulls. Only this time... This time, I'm doing something different. Something really terrific. Look, will you tell us what it is, Joe? <laughs> I'm knocking myself out, rounding up the press, getting the police to cooperate. I even got us a motorboat free of charge to take you out in the middle of the lake. Yeah, yeah, you're doing a real good job, Phil. I know you wouldn't let me down. I haven't even told you the best part. I got a big news magazine guy coming out. What? That's right. It's a guy I used to know a long time ago. He works on the show business section. I talked him into coming out. If he likes what he sees, well, who knows? You might get some pretty good national publicity. Uh, hey, hey, that's great, Phil. That's just terrific. Only I'll tell you this, pal. If I don't learn some details, I'm not. I'm going to be tempted to call the guy and put him off. I don't want him to come all the way out here just to see a guy get himself drowned. That's not the kind of news I want to see printed. Come on, Joe. Tell us what you're going to do. Okay. You want the scoop? Here's how it goes. The steamer trunk is no problem. It'll have a phony bottom. The canvas bag is no sweat either. That'd be the usual type I use. Pull the thread on top, the whole seam comes open. Yeah, I know about those gimmicks. As for the ropes, that will be pure muscle. I'll just make with the chest and muscle expansion. By the time they load the trunk on a motorboat, I'll be out of the ropes. By the time they're ready to dump me in the lake, I'll be out of the canvas bag. But first you have to get the handcuffs off. Sure. That's the most important part. What's it going to be, the key in your cuff? <laughs> well, what's so funny? <laughs> there ain't going to be any cuffs. What? You heard me. I figure that's the first thing those smart guys will be looking for, me having a key hidden. So I'll fool them completely. How? I mean, I'll let the cops examine me from head to foot to make sure I'm not hiding a key on me. And instead of pants, I'll wear a bathing suit. Are you nuts? Joe, you, you've got to have a key. There's no other way to get those handcuffs open. Oh, sure, sure. I'll have it on me. Because you're going to pass it to me, honey. Me? 
That's right. Well, how will I do that and then get away with it? Ah, that's the part I just dreamed up, and it's a beauty. You're my wife, see? You're going to have to kiss me goodbye before I go into that steamer trunk, right? Yeah. Well, guess what you have in your mouth when you give me that kiss? The key. Yeah, that's right. You'll kiss me bye-bye and pass that key from your mouth to mine. And that way, I'll be able to slip the key into the lock with my teeth. Get it? It's a good gimmick, Joe. It's beautiful, Phil. Beautiful. It can't miss. Yeah. Yeah, it does make sense. Nobody would think it's strange that I kiss you goodbye. You're the most natural thing in the world, honey. After all, any wife would kiss her husband when she may never see him again. That's it, Joe. Just breathe deep. Get plenty of oxygen into your lungs. You're going to need it. Oh, stop worrying about me, Phil. I feel great. I feel terrific. Hey, how's that crowd out there? It's okay. Maybe a hundred people. I didn't count it. Yeah, but that guy's there, isn't he? One from the news magazine? Yeah, he's here and a couple of other newspaper guys. One of them from New York. Yeah, it's going to work, Phil. I can tell. I'm going to really make it back to the big time. Well, if you're ready, the chief is waiting for you. I'm ready. Chief Wallace, I'd like you to say hello to the great Ferlini. How do, Mr. Ferlini? I sure hope you know what you're doing. Ferlini, this is Mr. Ralph Crimmins, president of the local Chamber of Commerce, Frank Petty of the Lake Paradise Tribune, and you've already met Dave Brooks, our motorboat pilot. Well, let's get started, huh? It's a warm day, and I want to go in for a little dip. <laughs> Chief Wallace, yeah, yeah. would you begin by placing the handcuffs on Mr. Ferlini? I certainly will. Uh, now, you've examined these cuffs, Chief, and you're sure they're genuine? Oh, they're genuine, all right. Would you clap them on, please? All right. There you are, Mr. Ferlini. Now, if you other gentlemen will please tie this rope around the great Ferlini's body. Make as many knots as you wish. Uh, 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 can, can I lend a hand there, too? I uh, used to be a boy scout. Oh, help yourself, Chief. <laughs> May I please have the canvas bag? Right here. Thank you. Now... As soon as these gentlemen have finished tying up the great Ferlini, we'll put the canvas bag over his head and lower him into the steamer trunk. Don't worry, Wanda. I'm going to be fine. Perhaps you'd like to kiss your husband goodbye, Mrs. Ferlini. And from the looks of things, I'd say that would be a very good idea. Ladies and gentlemen, the motorboat has stopped in the middle of the lake. Now, please watch carefully. Now, the trunk has been brought to the end of the boat. Chief Wallace and Dave Brooks, our pilot, are carefully lowering it over the side. There it goes, into the water. The steamer truck has gone straight to the bottom of the lake like a stone. The great Ferlini is inside in the greatest life and death struggle of his career. Can he work his way free of those steel manacles? Can he escape from 50 yards of rope bound tightly around his body? Can he get out of the canvas sack that covers him from head to foot? Can he break through the solid locks of that trunk and manage to reach the surface on time? Wanda, Tommy, you shouldn't have come here. I, I just thought it would have been uh, better. It's 15 seconds now. 15 long, long seconds for the great Ferlini. Wanda... What? Is everything all right? Please, don't talk to me now, Tommy. Not now. I'm sorry. I, I've missed you so much these past three days. I couldn't see you. You know we shouldn't be seen together. Well, I don't see why not. Everybody knows we're friends. We met at the Tropicana. 30 seconds. The great Ferlini has been underwater, sealed in that trunk for a full 30 seconds. And there's no sign of him. Is he all right? Wanda... When I talked to the manager of the inn again, he thinks he may have a spot for me at the show at the NMX. God, he's sick, Tommy. How can you talk about show business now? Well, isn't that what this is all about? Show business? Wanda, Wanda, for God's sake, what's happening out there? I don't know. How should I know? Why doesn't he come up? He said he'd be up in 20 seconds, no more than I that. I just don't know, Phil. 45 seconds and he's not up. He's got to be all right. He's got to be. Everything went just the way we planned. Hey, there, there isn't a sign of him, not a ripple on the water. He's gone. No, it didn't work. It didn't work. Not coming up. He's drowned. No. Joe's drowned. Well, I 
it looks as if the trick has failed. Or perhaps you could say that the trick has been too successful. The one played on Fellini the Great by his not-so-loving wife. Now uh, the question remains, will the crime go unpunished? Or does fate have at least one more trick up its sleeve? We'll find out shortly when we return with Act Three. This is WBBM Chicago. The great Fellini is dead. His waterlogged body, still loosely bound in rope, still encased in a canvas bag, which became his shroud, still in the steamer trunk, which became his coffin, has been removed from Lake Paradise. Now it's a time of mourning and a time of questions. I'm really sorry to be bothering you folks at a time like this, but um, in cases like these, we need to produce certain facts for the coroner's office. You understand? Yes, of course, Lieutenant. It's just that well, there isn't much to say about Joe's death. Things went wrong. That's all there is to it. Well, that's what we'd like to know. Uh, what things went wrong exactly? Oh, how can anybody answer that? So many things can go away with an act like that. That's the truth, Lieutenant. An escape act is a matter of split-second timing. Everything's got to be done carefully, precisely. If one factor goes badly, well, you saw what happened. I mm -hmm. told Joe not to go through with this. He was just too old for such a dangerous stunt. He'd never tried this water trick before? <laughs> no, never. No. It was Houdini. Houdini did it. Joe always wanted to do something to make him better known than Houdini. Houdini's been gone a long time. Did he still consider him competition? <laughs> yeah, that's the way Joe was. Alive or dead. The only thing that mattered was reputation. <laughs> fame. Did you try to stop him from this attempt, Mrs. Fernandez? <laughs> yes, I did. I did everything I could. I pleaded with him. I begged him. Maybe it was my fault, Lieutenant. Maybe I should have listened to Mrs. Fellini. But Joe just... Kept after me about it his, until... His reflexes were too slow. That was the real trouble. Well, that makes sense, I guess, Mrs. Fellini. But it isn't a fact. I still need a rough idea of what might have gone wrong. I, I guess that means you'll have to tell me how he intended to get out of that steamer trunk. Well, I don't know if we can do that, Lieutenant. You mean you don't know? Well, I mean, it's still a professional secret. The man is dead, Mr. Roscoe. Yeah, but just the same. I mean, well, you don't know the pride people like Joe Ferlini take in their work, in their methods. If I tell you how he did his tricks, it would be kind of a betrayal. Look, I appreciate how you feel, Mr. Roscoe, but uh, I'm not going to publish any expose on the man. I've just got to supply some answers for the record. Well, I just don't see the point of it. It could have been any of a dozen things. Well, just name some. All right. Obviously, he couldn't get the handcuffs off. The key must have dropped out of his mouth. What key? You... You didn't find a key? We weren't looking for one. Well, there was a key, all right. One that passed it to him before he got into the trunk. But his arms were bound to his side. How could he open the cuffs, even with a key? With his teeth. Joe's done that a hundred times. But this time... Well, he couldn't make it. Well, he searched the trunk. It was empty. It probably fell out of the trunk when they opened it. It's only a tiny key. A fish probably swallowed it by now. I see. And if Ferlini couldn't get out of the cuffs... He couldn't get out of the ropes. Uh, or the canvas sack. Or the steamer trunk. And then the air began to give out. Oh, Phil, that's enough. Please, that's enough. Yeah, yeah, Mrs. Ferlini. Okay. I guess that's enough for today. It's uh, pretty obvious what happened. And I guess it'll be obvious to the coroner, too. Death by... Misadventure. Death by Misadventure. Now, that's what I'd call a perfect description. Oh, how can you sound so happy about it? <laughs> Why should I be unhappy? Tell me the man is dead. He died a horrible he death. I doing what he wanted to do. What more can a man ask? No. No, you know the real truth. He died because of me. Because I gave him the kiss of death. No, 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 don't say things like but that. But it's true. It's absolutely true. 
I gave him his final kiss, and I passed the wrong key from my lips to you. You don't have to worry about that. You said the police never found the key to the handcuffs. No. No, they never found the key. They can't trace his death to me. Well, then you're safe. Safe? Is that what you call it? I killed him, you Tommy. You paid him back for a lifetime of torture. He was never happier in his whole life. I never saw him so happy. He thought he was going to be so famous. Look, look, try to stop thinking about it so much. Do you think I slept a wink last night? All I could think about was, was the way that trunk looked when it slid into the lake with Joe inside of it. And the way we waited and waited. And, Rhonda, and then cut the trunk out, coming huh? up all wet and slimy and Joe's still inside. Oh, my God, Tommy, I never had a nightmare that bad in my life. And it, it was all true. Well, there's something else that's true. Joe Frelini is being buried this morning. And that means you'll never have to worry about his mistreating you again. Yeah. I won't have to worry about living with Joe anymore. Now I'll have to worry about living with myself. You don't have to live by yourself. You've got me now, Wanda. Oh, please, Tommy, not now. I can't listen to such talk now. Not on the way to the funeral. <laughs> Dear friends, we are gathered here today to consign the mortal remains of Joseph Martin Ferlini to the earth which bore him. Joseph Ferlini was a man of courage and strength, a man who devoted his life to bring pleasure to others. He was, in fact, a man who sacrificed his life to that devotion. He used to say to his audiences, I wish to demonstrate that there is something in the human spirit which cannot be chained. And there is something called the human soul which cannot be kept behind bars. This was Joseph Fellini, who died performing the work of his life. And who can say... Hear me! Is this a Fellini funeral? Right. I beg your pardon? I don't mean to interrupt you, Reverend, but this is the Fellini service, right? Uh, yes, that's true. Well, I'm sorry to break this up, but uh, I'm from the county corner. Phil, what's going on? I don't know. Let's go see. Uh, really, I, I, I can't imagine what this is all I'm about. I'm afraid uh, the funeral services can't continue. You see, uh, we have orders to attach the body of Joseph Fellini. Yes, but surely... What's going you... on here? What's the matter? Uh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Uh, are you Mrs. Fellini? Yes. Why'd you stop the service? I have a court order. Now, the coroner is requesting a further examination of the remains. What? I'm afraid I'll have to open the coffin, Mrs. Fellini. Open but, the uh, coffin? Yeah. You can't mean that. He's going to be buried. You can't open his coffin Come here. Come on, you can't get away with that. I don't yeah. have any choice. Now, there's a caretaker's cottage on the grounds, and... We can use that for the examination. Uh, uh, would you gentlemen please uh, pick up the coffin and follow me? Phil, don't let them do it. Uh, no, 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 hush, one. It's all right. I'm sure it's just a formality. Uh, please. The sooner we get this over with, the better. All right, now. Uh, please stand back while I open the coffin. Oh, my God. I don't want to look. Don't let it bother you, Wanda. You saw Joe when he was in the funeral parlor. He'll look just the same now. Would you... Give me a hand with this lid. Yeah, sure. Oh, 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 oh. What, wow. It's empty. Dear Lord in heaven. What, what did you say? Don't look, Wanda. But he's gone. Well, how could he get out of his own coffin? Gone? Did you say Joe is gone? He is gone! <laughs> All right, Mr. Roscoe, um, let's hear the whole story from the beginning. Look, I'm really sorry about this, Lieutenant. It was just something I couldn't help. I mean, a promise is a promise. Yes, and breaking the law is breaking the law. I'm not under arrest, am I? Well, we'll determine that after you tell me the truth. Well, you got to understand the way things are in my profession. Everything is showmanship, everything. That's what my life has been for the past 30 years. Is that how long Fellini was your client? Practically. And in the early days, everything was different. 
Ballyhoo, crazy stunts, way out schemes for getting publicity. You know how it is. What about the missing body? Well, it was like a pact that I made with Joe. A pact? Yeah. That's the kind of guy he was. A showman to the end. And I really mean the end. Well, uh, what was the deal? He made me promise him that if anything happened to him, if he died, that I would arrange for one last escape. Something that would make him remembered even longer than Houdini. Are you telling me this was all a cheap publicity stunt? No, it was a trick, Lieutenant. That's the word for it. I slipped the undertaker a hundred bucks, and he arranged to have Ferlini buried someplace secretly. Then he put an empty coffin in the hearse with some slates in the bottom to give it weight. Oh, for the love of Pete. man from the coroner's office, he was a phony, too. It was an actor I hired, so we could open the coffin right on the spot. You see what I mean? Showmanship. Yes, I see what you mean, all right. But I suppose you know what the effect of your showmanship has been. What do you mean? I'm talking about Mrs. Ferlini. Yeah, I feel rotten about that. But I couldn't tell her in advance, Lieutenant. Joe made me swear not to tell anyone. He wanted the mystery to last forever and ever. The last escape of Ferlini the Great. But considering what happened to Mrs. Ferlini, you had to tell the truth. Yeah. I had to. Tell me, how is she, Lieutenant? Where have you got her now? As a matter of fact, she's right next door. How's she doing? Look for yourself. <laughs> oh, my Joe, God. Joe, Wanda. Joe, Wanda. Joe. She's completely out of her head, Mr. Roscoe. <laughs> and she isn't the escape artist her husband was. <laughs> she can't get out of that straight, <laughs> Wanda Ferlini does go to prison for her crime. But in this case, it's the kind of prison whose bars are created in one's own mind. And it may well be the most cruel and unusual punishment of all. By the way, you may be interested to know that some doctors prefer to call a straitjacket a camisole. I think it's a much more suitable word, especially if it's going to be worn by a lady. I'll be back shortly. It's really a pity that the days of Houdini and his like seem to be gone. However, we think Joe Ferlini was right. Everything does come back. And we can probably look forward to seeing a whole new generation of escape artists, magicians, and illusionists. In fact, you're enjoying one of the greatest illusionists of all time right this minute. It's called Radio. Our cast included Robert Dryden, Joan Lovejoy, Joseph Julian, Russell Horton, and Bob Caliban. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. You mean she felt that guilty about what had happened? Mm. Guilty enough to seek punishment for herself. And she did. She punished herself by losing the use of her legs. And, and so, your treatment was able to cure her. Yes, I'm happy to say. It couldn't cure me. See, I didn't lose the use of my hands for any kind of reason like that. I mean, it's just some sort of nerve damage. Well, if that's the diagnosis of your physician, that it's purely physical and incurable... Oh, but I didn't say that. See, I mean, my doctor has never used the word incurable. I have been hoping for years that it would just heal itself. I can't go on living like this. I want my hands back. Oh, dear God, I want my hands. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant... Dreams?